perfect sum. It's hard to even put into words what it's going to be like when you get to the kingdom of God. Is to know that what the Lord has promised is true. It's worth whatever it takes to get to the kingdom of God. Now you have your Bibles with you this morning. If you will turn with me to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Before we look to God's word, let's look to Him in prayer. It's time to anoint His word and anoint each of us as we listen together today what the Spirit says to the church. Father, we rejoice in the privilege of worship this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you are here by your presence and by your Holy Spirit. Lord, we have already been lifted up, made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus our Lord. We thank you for worship. We thank you for the time that we can be strengthened, the time when our faith may be renewed, time when we may open our hearts with thanksgiving and praise unto our God. We thank you, Lord, for the word of God that gives us strength and hope and help. I pray now, Lord, that as we open the word of God this morning, that likewise by your Holy Spirit you will open our hearts. May we listen together today to what the Spirit says to the church. And I pray, Lord, that as we come to the end of the worship service, May we have been so encouraged and so strengthened in our faith that we will leave the house of God better equipped, encouraged, and strengthened to go out and to live our faith from day to day. To this end, Lord, I pray that the anointing of God would be upon each person today as we worship you together through your word. For it is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. <clears throat> when I ask you this morning, again, a question, I'd like you to raise your hand to it, if you would. How many of you know this morning that you have a whole lot of faith? How many know that? <laughs> Praise the Lord. The rest of you weren't here last Sunday. <laughs> last Sunday we discovered through the Word of God that everyone has a tremendous amount of faith. Well, what is faith? Faith is the confidence. Faith is the confidence that someone or something is reliable. Never forget that. Faith is the confidence that someone or something is reliable. Faith says, I am going to receive what I believe for just around the next bend in the curve of time. That's what faith is. Confidence. Every day of our life, we live by faith. Every day is a demonstration of our faith. And as a matter of fact, everything you do is a demonstration of faith. For example, tomorrow morning there's going to be a great number of you, whether you like it or not, you are going to get out of bed and get ready and go to work. That is an act of faith. The reason I say it's an act of faith, why do you go? You go because you have confidence that the company you are working for is reliable and at the end of the week you are going to be reimbursed for your work. That's faith. Faith says, I believe my company is reliable and I will get up and I will go to work having that confidence that at the end of the time period I am going to receive compensation for my work. When you get sick, and you go to the doctor, that's an act of faith. You have confidence that if I will go to the doctor, he will have the knowledge to help me to get better. That's faith. <laughs> After having gone to the doctor, he gives you a prescription, you fill the prescription, and you take the medicine. That's an act of faith. 
<laughs> he says, I have confidence to believe that this medication I have been given will make me well. All of these are acts of faith. As a matter of fact, without action, there is no faith. Did you know that? There can be no faith unless there is corresponding action to that faith. And that's one of the most important things you'll ever know about faith. There is no faith without <coughs> action. Many say, well, I, I believe, I believe. But if there is no action, there is no faith. When you say, I have faith and I will get paid at the end of the week and you lay in bed tomorrow morning and you don't get up and go to work, you don't have faith. Or maybe you have faith you're going to get fired. I don't know what it is. But <laughs> if you really have faith, and you say, I believe this is going to happen, you never have faith until you put that into action. Something has to happen or there is no faith. We can talk about faith and we can talk about things we believe in, but unless there is corresponding action, there is no faith. Now, having said all of that, how many of you, you don't need to raise your hand, just think about it. How many of you would believe or would agree that God is reliable? Don't raise your hand, just answer in your heart. Do you really and truly believe that God is reliable? Look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Remember, faith is the confidence that someone or something is reliable. When we ask, do we have faith in God, we are saying, do we believe that God is reliable? Verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him or to please God. Unless we have confidence that God is reliable, you cannot please him. Unless you believe in your heart that God is truly reliable, you cannot please him. You may say, well, I believe in God. Let me tell you something. Do you know that James says that even the devils believe in God? Just to say, oh, I believe in God does not say that you have faith in God. <coughs> Devils believe in God. They know there is a God. They know more about God and believe more about God than most Christians believe. Because they know, and they know the power of God. But without faith, without that confidence that God is reliable, you cannot please God. Unless your faith, so important, unless your faith leads you into action for God, you don't have any faith in God. Now that's strong, and I want to say it again because they're important. Unless your faith in God leads you to action for God, you don't have any faith. All you have is a bunch of words. You can say, oh, I believe in God. I have faith in God. Then there has to be that corresponding action. And the scripture says, without faith, you cannot please God. Unless you have that faith, that confidence that God is reliable, then you cannot please God. Look at the last part of verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Now notice, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that what? Diligently. Diligently seek him. I want you to get that very clear. It's so important. Without faith, you cannot please God because everyone that comes to God must believe that he is and that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now let me tell you what that does not mean. That does not mean that when trouble and problems and sickness come into your life that you pray real hard that God is going to do something for you. That's not faith. It is not faith to pray real hard 
And then God, if I pray hard enough and I reach out long enough, you're going to do something for me. That's not what faith is. You see, the emphasis is not on what God does for us. But the emphasis is on diligently seeking him, not what he can do for us. You see, real faith is a faith that says, I diligently seek God for who he is, not what he can do for us. That is a byproduct. But those who please God must believe that he is, and they must diligently seek him. That's the emphasis. Diligently seek Him. If you have faith, if you believe, and if you believe that God is reliable, that you can trust Him, and you believe that He is a rewarder, now notice, then you will diligently seek Him. And if you diligently seek Him, you have faith. Now, there's a big difference. I want you to get that. If you believe that God is reliable, if you really believe he is reliable, then you will with all of your heart seek him. Seek God. Seek who he is. And when you diligently seek him, then you have faith. Then he is a rewarder now notice, he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. He is not a rewarder of those who diligently seek something from him. And that's where most people fit into the Christ. They seek something from him rather than seeking him. <coughs> Faith says, I believe God is, I believe that God is reliable, and therefore I seek God. And when we seek him, then he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. If we say we have faith and it's not put into action, we really do not have faith. If you say you have faith in God, then you will diligently seek him. And if you do not diligently seek God, you do not have saving faith. You see, faith is action. Faith is something we do. Faith says, I believe in God. Therefore, because I believe in God, I will act. And there is the action. I believe it is time for the people of God to allow the power of God to flow through our life. So God can do with us and through us and in his world what he wants to do. You see, God has a great plan for his world. But God works through people. God works through those who say, I believe God is. And I am going to seek God for who he is. And when people begin to seek God for who he is, they begin to put into action. They begin to do something. And when they begin to do something toward God, then God reaches down and does something to them and through them into his world. And I believe in this time as never before that the people of God began to allow God by faith to work in their life first and then to work in his world. Turn with me to James chapter 2. And James is the very next book. So from Hebrews, turn toward the end of your Bible, and you'll come to the book of James. James chapter 2. I want you to notice verse 14. Verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he have faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Now you understand the question. James is very, but James said, listen, you say you have faith? Now, that's great. That's great. Man may say he have faith and have not works. Can you say that? Then can faith save him? Now, in answer to his own question, James gives an illustration. The very next verse is the illustration. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, 
And if one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warm and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? No, James said, listen, here's what I'm talking about. If you know someone that is hungry and he's clothed and you have clothing and you have food and you say to that person, oh, well, you just go your way and you be warm and you be filled, is he going to accomplish anything? You say, of course not. Then James comes and says, then you've answered my question. Then he drives home the point, the next verse. Even so, here's my answer, even so, Faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Wow. That hurts. That hurts. That says, listen, if I say I have faith in God and there are no works to support that statement, my faith is dead. <laughs> and we have dead faith. The only thing we have to do is just to bury it. Just to bury it. Can faith save us? No. Oh, that's not what the Bible says. Well, yes, faith saves us. But you got to understand what faith is all about. <coughs> faith is an action word. Faith without works or faith void from work is not faith. It takes faith, it takes action before there's true faith. Now, let's get down to verse 18. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest there is one God? Oh boy, you do well. That's great. Do you know that even the devils also believe and tremble? You know, different than the devils if you say you believe in God. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Boy, James is tough. James said, listen, we got to cut away all of this outward show and get down to business and say, oh, well, I believe in God. He said, well, you're, so what? So what? Do you have a saving faith? Wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? As a matter of fact, there is no faith without corresponding works. We may say all we want to that we have faith in God, but if your faith does not lead you to put into practice what God says in his word, you don't have faith. That's strong, but it's true. If you say you have faith in God, and that faith in God does not lead you to put into practice what God says in his word, you don't have faith. It's dead. It's dead. Simple as that. If your faith only sends you to God when problems and difficulties come, you don't have faith. Well, you know that even the worst sinner will do that. I mean, even the person that does not claim any faith at all in God will do that. When problems and difficulties and sickness come, they will go to God in prayer. And if your faith only leads you to God in times of difficulty, you don't have faith. Now, I am not saying that when times of difficulties come, you don't go to God in prayer. But I am saying, if that's the only time you reach out to God, you don't have faith. Because everybody will do that. You don't have to be a claim to be a Christian to do that. Tough times will lead people to reach out to God. If all your faith does is cause you to make a half-hearted attempt to go to church and serve God, you don't have faith. If your faith says, well, yes, I believe in God. I believe in the church. I know what the Bible says. To forsake not the assembly of yourselves together, I believe that. But you only make a half-hearted attempt to serve God and to go to church when there's nothing else to do. You don't have faith. 
He said, Amen, and out you the one. It's still true. If you have only a faith that lets you do those things, only one of us can be. You don't have faith. You really don't have faith in God. If your faith in God leads you only to take a position in the church and only do a halfway job, you don't have faith. If you have faith in God and that faith in God allows you or leads you to take a position within the church of Jesus Christ, you better do a good job. Because if you don't, you don't have faith in God. You see, there are a lot of people who say, well, yeah, put me down. I'll, I'll take a position. I'll take something in the church. Maybe nobody else will do it, so put me down. I'll be put on some board or some committee or whatever, and I'll just kind of do, you know, half-hearted. That's not all that important. You don't have faith in God. The Bible <coughs> says they that come to God believe he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And if I believe God is leading me into a particular position in the church, if I really believe that, I'm going to go at it with all of my heart. Because I know when I do it with all of my heart, I'm seeking him and he is a reward. If your faith in God does not prompt you to serve God when <laughs> life is tough, and when it is difficult to do the right thing, you don't have faith. If you have a faith that when times get tough, and when it's really, I mean really difficult to serve God, you don't have faith. If you only serve God when it's easy or when, they're, when you think you're going under, you don't have faith. Simple as that. You know, I know God must get sick and tired of looking down on his world and seeing all the people around him and say, I'm a Christian, I believe in God, I have faith in God. And see them doing absolutely nothing. See <clears throat> no action. See me, oh yes, I'm a Christian, I have faith in God. And I say, yeah, I don't see it. I don't see anything in your life that says you have faith. I see no action. I do not see you putting into practice what I say in my word. If you have faith, it's dead. And something that's dead, you bury it. You see, faith, faith in God, demands action. Turn back to Hebrews chapter 11 again quickly. Hebrews chapter 11. I want you to notice with me verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. That's faith. Faith demanded action from Abraham. Leave your finger there in, in Hebrews and turn back to the book of Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. You're going to see faith in action. Genesis 22, verse 1. It came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham arose up early in the morning and sat on his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clayed the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. That's faith. Abraham had lived for this one son. God gave him that son and now God says to him, Abraham, I want you to take your son your only son, I know you love him very much, but I want you to offer him as a sacrifice on the altar. Tough? Yes. Difficult? Yes. Impossible? Almost. Almost. 
Almost dead. But, but listen. Now notice, here's faith. Faith says, Abraham says, God, I know you are reliable. I know what you say is true, and I've learned that I can depend on you. I can trust in you. I don't understand. I cannot comprehend. It is tough, but I will do it. That's faith. Faith says, I don't have to understand. I've just got to do what God's word says. And Abraham took his son that he loved so much, and I, I like the way the Bible says, he was up early the next morning. He didn't delay. He just said, God, I don't understand what you're doing. I don't understand anything about this, but I trust you. You are reliable. Therefore, I will put into action what you say, even though I don't understand. You see, faith demands action. And when there is no faith, there is no action. Go back to Hebrews again, chapter 11. <coughs> Hebrews chapter 11. Sometimes read through this entire chapter. The entire chapter is due with people of faith. People say, God, you are reliable. I believe in you. I know I can trust you. Therefore, I will put into action what you say, even though I don't really fully understand. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 22. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandments concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid of his parents three months of his parents, because they saw he was a proper child. Verse 24, By faith Moses, which has come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. I don't understand that. I don't understand that Moses down in the land of Egypt, the next heir to the throne of Egypt, had everything and anything he could possibly want. The Bible says he chose to suffer affliction. He chose tough times. Why? Believe God. Believe what God said. That's why I said, if you do not have faith in God when the times go tough, you don't have faith at all. Faith says, God, I don't understand always, but I know you are reliable. I know what you say is reliable. Therefore, I choose to act upon what you say. That's faith. That's saving faith. What we need today in the church is a resurrection. We need a resurrection. There are too many just going through the motions. And incidentally, not doing a very good job at that. So many say, oh, I have faith in God. I believe in God. And yet their whole lifestyle says, I don't believe God one bit. Oh, but I believe in God. I have faith in God. Show me your action. I have faith in God. And yet, when the Bible talks about no one saying, well, that's one of my weaknesses. No sin. If I believe in God, I act upon his word. I do something about it. I clean up my life. You see, what we need today is a resurrection where dead faith becomes alive. We begin to look at it and say, God, I believe you. I believe you are reliable. Therefore, I am going to put into action in my life what you say in your word, no matter how tough it may be. If we're not willing to do that, we don't have faith. Because, see, faith is action. And there's so many that fit in the category of what Paul said to Timothy. <coughs> Having a form of godliness, but denying God the power there. Let's close this turn back to Romans chapter 1. Watch this, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it, that is the gospel, it is the power, it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first, also to the Greek. Now I want you to notice this next verse. Very powerful and very important. Verse 17, for therein, that is in the word of God, therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. If you don't live by faith, you're not just. 
that we're just made justified before God. The just shall live by faith. Those who are right with God say, listen, those who are right with God say, God, I believe you are reliable. I believe what you say. I believe what you declare. Therefore, because I believe it, I receive it into my life and I live by it. The just shall live, put into action, shall live by faith. Those who are right with God will live by faith. Are you living by faith? <clears throat> Does your faith lead you to believe that God is reliable? And does that correspond to action in your life? If it doesn't, you don't have faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Let me close with this. Do you know that a demonstration of faith sometimes is just an act of the will. You know that? Sometimes people think faith is something mystical, something you can't get a handle on. But sometimes an act of faith is a demonstration of the will. Where I say, God, I know your word, and I will act upon the word of God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For those that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him in their life. Do you have faith? Examine your own life. Faith that has not corresponding works is dead. Maybe you need a resurrection in your own life. Where faith will become alive and become action. And it may just require an act of your will to do what God says in His Word because He is reliable. Father, I am grateful for Your Word. <laughs> Father, I pray that You would help each of us to examine our own lives, help us to recognize that faith is very real. And faith is just knowing and believing that God is reliable. And because we believe that, we will put into action what you say in your word. Because faith without works is big. Lord, if we need a resurrection in our life, a resurrection of faith, a resurrection that will put us back in touch with God and in tune with God. And it may require an act of our will to say, I will believe because I know my God is reliable. Lord, if we need to make some commitments this morning, I pray that even now your Holy Spirit will speak. And as your Holy Spirit speaks to us individually, may we act in faith according to your word, in Jesus' name. Amen.